In this short video, I'm going to talk a little bit about VO2 metabolic testing, um, but a little bit more importantly, how you could use the VO2 metabolic test uh, to help you lose weight and improve your performance in triathlons, marathons, uh, virtually any, any type of sport. I know a lot of people um, have heard of VO2 testing and they don't really understand um, how it could be used as far as training or weight loss. And then I've also heard of a lot of people that go get a VO2 metabolic test and they're given their number and they're not really explained on how to work um, the, you know, it into their performance or their weight loss. So I'm going to give a little brief explanation, try to give you an idea about, um, about how this can be used as far as training and weight loss. Uh, first of all, the VO2 um, number, it, it, it's pretty much just a number. It, it, the VO2 max number is basically a measurement of your engine size. It's going to tell you that you have a 500 horsepower engine and Joe Smith over here has a 200 horsepower engine. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that one is necessarily the fitter, fitter athlete, the leanest athlete, or the fattest athlete. That's just basically saying that's your engine size. Uh, you could have two people that have very similar um, uh, VO2 max numbers and um, might be totally different type of people as far as the, their leanness or the athletic ability. Um, an example of that is I have a, a, my VO2 max is very similar to my 17-year-old son, son's VO2 max number. Uh, however, he's about 50, 60 pounds lighter than I am. So an example would be we both have 500 horsepower engines. My 500 horsepower engine is in a semi. His 500 horsepower engine is in a Ferrari. He's designed a lot more to go faster because he's, he's just leaner, he's smaller, less body fat. So the VO2 max number, it's a nice number, you compare yourself to others. But more importantly what the VO2 max test is, is to determine your fat burning and your sugar burning heart rate zones. So what we do in the VO2 max is basically um, you wear a mask and as you breathe out uh, the, the ratios of carbon dioxide and oxygen are, are, are measured in, in, a, in a sensor. And at different ratios of carbon dioxide and oxygen, um, we could determine what you're burning as a source of fuel. So what we do is we want you to get on, uh, we have you on a treadmill, on your bike. Um, don't think that you have to be extremely fit to have this test on either. Uh, you could do it walking and we could just raise the, the, um, the, the incline of the, uh, the treadmill up or easy on the, uh, on the bike. So you don't have to be running as hard as you can, spit it all over the place. Some people do that, but it's not necessarily to get this number. So what we're going to do is what we do is we, we, we have you walk on the treadmill or on the bike. And what we're going to do is we're going to gradually increase your heart rate, get a heart rate going up a little bit here. And then we're going to have another graph that's showing how much fat you're burning as a source of fuel. And so as exercise or as your exercise intensity, your heart rate elevates, what we do is we get your graph coming up, as far as heart rate going up, and we see your fat. And then eventually what happens is we see a point which we call the crossover point. And that means our heart rate has gone up such a high that we've gone um, anaerobic or non-fat burning. And we're not burning much fat. So what we do now is from that simple test between maybe eight minutes to a half an hour, what we could do is now we get to know where you're burning fat and where you're not burning fat. And how do we um, relate this to training or weight not loss is, is a little bit different than what a lot of people think. I know a lot of people in, in the gyms, they see their heart rate zones and fat burning zones and, and, and stuff like that. And, and when you hear of heart rate training, there's one philosophy that says, run as hard as you can because it's all about burning calories. And then the other one says, oh, I need it to be at the 70% because that's my fat burning zone. Um, some truth to both of them, some false to both of them. And once we know your number, okay, now we can actually see where you're actually burning fat as a source of fuel. So let's use this for weight loss and, and um, Ironman triathlon distance training for, for an example. Let's just say a person has a crossover point at 120 and that means that the crossover point of 120 is where the heart rate goes up and we see that their fat dramatically stops burning um, uh, as, as fuel. So as far as weight loss what we want to do is we want to make your body efficient at burning 
fat as fuel. Don't think about this as a total calories. Think, think this about energy systems. In this little window here, your body is burning fat as, as a source of, of fuel. Beyond that crossover point, as we get a little bit high in the heart rate, we'll see in the graph that there's very little fat being, being used. Now, there's always burning fat, except however, at this above 120 for this person, he's not burning very much, burning very much fat. So what we wanted, and what we do is we find a lot of people uh, trying to lose weight are working out very hard um, and mostly burning sugar or putting their body to be a carbohydrate burning source as fuel. So let's say this guy's, like I said, he crossed over at 120, um, but he's out jogging at 150. Now his heart rate going to show he's burning a lot of calories, however, he's burning mostly sugar at, at, that, at that stage and he's not developing his system to be efficient and burn fat. So this is the guy who runs a lot, um, he's t constantly doing these exercises, not losing weight, um, gets maybe extremely um, hungry after the workouts and that's because he's not getting the calories from the fat and he's more than likely not running for hours on end so he still has enough sugar in the system so he's really not very burdened or as fat. So a, a VO2 metabolic test is very important to, to, to determine at what heart rate your body's burning fat. Then what we could do is we could tailorize a, a training program or exercise program based on your specific number. Um, now, for weight loss, it's a lot more than just finding that one zone. We have people do high-intensity intervals, uh, but we do break it up and have them work in, the, in their fat-burning zone. Now, as far as performance, okay, a lot of people, let's use the same 120 for, for an example. Um, I'm out there um, biking at 140. And what we do from the VO2 test, we found that at 120 is where his crossover point, he dramatically stops burning fat at that level. We also get what's called our threshold um, training uh, from the VO2 max. And let's say that the, the, the guy who had the crossover point at 120 had a threshold of 160. But he's spending most of the time at 130, 140 training. So he's really not at the high level threshold training and he's not low enough to be in the fat burning aerobic training based on his metabolic test. So he's really not getting the best of either worlds there. Um, but once we get his, his number, now we could say, hey, you, you crossed over at 120. We need you to go between 110 and 120. And now remember, these are just numbers I'm, I'm, I'm out there. Don't try to uh, use your own heart rate data to think, oh, geez, 110 to 120. I'm just using that as just a, just a number for, for discussion. Um, so he crossed over at 120. Now we might say, you know what, we need you to train at 110 to 120 to develop that aerobic system. Um, and then what we want to do is do your threshold or your speed work really high intensity towards that 160 that we found. Um, almost kind of like we want our hard days to be really hard and our easy days to be really easy to develop that, that aerobic system. Um, how does this help the, the athlete? Well, when you're doing a long distance triathlon, long distance bike, long distance run, you want to get the energy from your fat, your own body source of fat. The reason why we want to avoid fats in food is because there's higher amount of calories and fats than carbohydrates or proteins. Um, the same thing is for your body. You want to be using your body's fat as source of fuel because there's higher calories associated with that. Um, and if you could train your body to be efficient at burning uh, your own fat as a source of fuel, you'll need to take in less calories, less sports drinks, less goos during your, your training. So again, if I use that person who, who crosses over at 120, we want to develop that body system, make it efficient at burning fat, to really develop the aerobic system. And if you spend enough time in there, what will happen is the body will become efficient at burning fat, and with the proper training, we could shift that um, crossover point higher. So after a few months worth of training, maybe we redo the test and he crosses over at 130 or 140. What does that mean? Well, that means he could run, bike, exercise at a higher intensity, but his body is still using its fat as a source of, of fuel. And therefore, he's got needs to be taking in less calories on his own. Because um, we know if, all during exercise, we've done marathons, biking, iron triathlon, one of the biggest fears of, of a DNF is upset stomach. 
And if your body is not being efficient at burning fat, that means you need to be taking in sports drink, goose, or some type of fuel uh, so you don't bonk or, or pass out. Uh, so it becomes very important to really try to teach your, your body to, 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 to burn fat as a source of, of, of fuel. And the only way we can really do this is with the metabolic test. Um, there's a lot of equations out there that, 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 that try to estimate the... The, the equations are extremely flawed. It, it's kind of a hit or miss um, whether or not that equation is going to actually work out for, for you. Uh, when I actually did the equation, it told me I needed to, to be at a, um, like 130 to 145 to be my aerobic zone. And I have a pretty low heart rate. If I'm at 145, I'm sprinting up the hill. It's just so high for me. And, and, and I'm totally anaerobic at, at that stage. I'm not working in my aerobic zone at all based on the data we got from the VO test. So for, for me, if I tried to do that, it, it, it would just kill me. I, I think I'm training aerobically, but I'm totally training anaerobically, and I'd be training my body to burn more sugar rather than, than fat as a source of, of fuel. So those equations are, are hit or miss. Sometimes they work. Um, most of the time they don't. So one of the things you want to do is, is really try to find someone who does a VO2 metabolic test, but then also, you know, when you do it, you want to interpret the data a little bit. We could get some pre-printed uh, workout co cards or heart rate zones, you know, there's a one, two, th three, uh, four. However, what we really want to do is really try to find that little area where you're burning the most uh, fat and then also your threshold. We're really trying to find those two areas. Then you can train a lot smarter, not necessarily more frequent or, or, or harder. We talk about this a lot of times, that, you know, people talk about junk miles, just going out and riding and riding all these miles. And that's because a lot of times, like I said, they're in between these. They're not quite in that threshold, so they're not getting the benefits of these all-out sprints and lactic acid and, 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 and that type of stuff. Um, but they're also not low enough to really develop their, their aerobic, their fat burning system. So they're kind of in between there. And really, once you get this test done, you can really dial in, do, dial in your, your training. So I hope that gives you a little bit idea of, of what you could do with the VO2 metabolic test. Um, I'm sure if you just Google VO2 metabolic test, you'll find some places around that will... Uh, do the test for you. Um, if you're in our area, give us a call, uh, drop me an email, or check out our website, or give me a call and we can talk about this a little bit more. Video, what I said, there would be a special bonus for you if you stayed to the end of the video. Well, here's the bonus. I'm offering you a special deal on our initial weight loss evaluation. Our initial weight loss evaluation costs $100. And what that includes is a consultation with me. It includes the heart rate variability stress rate recovery test where you could actually measure your body's nervous system and metabolism and see if your body is under too much stress to actually lose weight. It also includes the adrenal stress test that allows us to determine if your adrenal system is under stress. Again, if that's under stress, it's going to be very hard to lose weight. It's going to include the metabolic age test, where we're actually going to measure what your true metabolic age is. Lots of times what we do is we may have a 25 year come, come in and yet we find out they have the metabolism of a 50 or 60 year old. That's not a good thing. Um, it's going to include a body fat measurement where we're going to actually measure to see how much body fat you have on your body and we're also going to measure the water on your body, see how much of your body's weight is actually just retaining in water. It's also going to include uh, a muscle mass measurement that's going to see how much muscle mass that you have on your body. If you don't have a lot of muscle mass on your body, that's going to really, really slow your metabolism down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sit down, go over these tests, talk about what your goals for weight loss might be, um, your past history with weight loss, what have you tried to lose weight, where do you think you need to be with your weight. And then what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit more about the further testing that we could do, such as the hormone testing, uh, nutritional blood testing, and um, uh, metabolic exercise or, or walk test. We'll tell you what other little information we need um, that will be necessary to get you to where you need to be. So the cost for that is $20, normally $100, 
but since you stayed for this entire video, we're going to do that for you for only $20. So if you're really truly interested about taking that next step, if you're tired of the fad diets, the gimmick supplements, take that next step. Like Remember, I've been there. I was over 60 pounds over my weight. I've learned how to keep it off um, over the years, and I really truly want to help you. I've dedicated my practice to helping people lose weight. So please call my office up. Tell them you're calling, you watch the videos, you want the internet special consultation with Dr. Banas, and you and I will sit down and see what we need to do to get you to the next level.